Hello, this is John Kitchener, color and style consultant, talking to you from my office near Atlanta, Georgia. And I've just completed another virtual palette, this time for a client in New Zealand. And uh, this is quite a range, actually. Um, this is really arranged according from stronger down to quieter. And again, this is a fabric swatch range. We have always used fabric. And uh, the, uh, the idea of using fabric is wonderful. It gives an aliveness and nuance to the colors that paint samples and printed samples do not offer. And uh, people ask me again, how can you do a virtual palette on a computer? Well, first of all, you need to use the best computer there is, and that's a Mac or an Apple with a retina display. I have one and it's a retina display calibrated to noon daylight for the most accurate results. What the client does is they send me um, uh, digital photos taken in bright direct sun. And the bright direct sun, when it's on the skin and reflects off the skin, you can see the subtleties of pigmentation in the coloring. Plus, you can also see the transparency, the translucency, and the layering that exists in the person's complexion, in the quality of the skin. And so from that, you can really create an entire palette of over 100 swatches, which this is, and uh, completely, again, custom to the individual. We don't do color by season. This is a completely individualized process, which it should always be. And I was mentioning these are uh, in an order of strength. The colors here are her romantic colors. The first page is very strong. The second page of pinks is a little bit quieter. And then the rose range is a little bit more reserved. These are great choices for lipstick and blush. So they're very exacting to the warmth, the coolness, the lightness, darkness, and subtlety that exists in her complexion. The next range are the power colors, which are her most assertive colors. The greens in this case had the most assertiveness and most contrast with her coloring, which really elevated it. Um, again, this is a very assertive color. The blue greens are a little bit quieter. The turquoises are a little more reserved and the blues are even uh, quieter. And they're arranged from the first one has no letter and then it has then A and then B and then C added to it. This next range are the playful colors. These are lighthearted, fun, energetic, and sports colors. And the green again began this stronger, uh, it was the strongest within this range. These soft yellows being a little quieter, these purple blues and lavenders being a little more reserved. And she has very uniquely what's often found as a coral in some palettes. In this case is a nectarine version of oranges and uh, beautiful. And the last range over here and her brightest area of colors would be her sophisticated or elegant colors. These royal blues and dark purples uh, begin that range, and then these other purples are a little bit quieter. She doesn't go very red in the purples because the plum, lilac, and magenta areas of the colors would have fought with the pink that already exists in her skin, would it also blend in with her, and would make her uh, <laughs> look a little disharmonious, to say the least. This wonderful range down here is very unique. This is unique to each palette. It's the person's eye color range. And uh, she has blue-green eyes. The darker colors down here represent the outer rim color of her eyes. When she wears her eye color, it's a calm, peaceful, trustworthy effect. It's very calming, very soft, um, very compassionate. This uh, color is called the understated. These are the reserved neutrals and these are the conservative neutrals. Um, just to do a quick range over to black here, the black was very quiet on her and not very good at her face. So the deep greens in here, the navy and the two eggplant colors that are in this range are very good alternatives to black. Um, the understateds are great for suits, jackets, and coats. The neutral reserve colors are often worn away from the face. They're fairly quiet. Uh, these pick up a little bit of her hair color. Um, they go from kind of a, a, a cocoa taupe color into a soft camel, into gray beiges and yellow beiges. There's a range of grays, very simple, basic grays, not too, not too dark, not too light. Um, 
And then she has a very unique range of whites. These are cream whites going towards oyster. And the oysters are the uh, greenish or grade whites. And these are worn for half body amounts, which is a blouse, jacket, skirt, or pants. The last range are her medals, which are used for jewelry and accessories. Um, of the ones that really in, uh, enhanced her coloring the most were the shiny silver and shiny gold. Both were very equal, actually, on her skin. Uh, rose gold and uh, brass and copper were all way too quiet or too heavy on her complexion. At the end of the analysis, what we look at is the qualities of color harmonies that are evident in the, in the actual palette. Um, that will indicate how warm, how cool, how subtle, how light and dark the palette actually goes. Now there's a softened watercolor feeling to her colors, yet they're still fairly light and bright. Uh, and yet there's about a 30% or a third element uh, of subtlety in her colors, which grays down the colors. And there's also 5%, just a very subtle amount of earthy going on in there, which deepens and warms the palette just overall. So she is mostly what we would call lively bright with 30% subtle blended and 5% earthy rich. Now what those percentages do, they're not only the qualities that are inherent in the colors, but they translate to bone structure, face shapes, and body type. And what that is, is she will be able to know from the information that we'll provide her on that 30%, the 5%, and the 65%, how to work with those. It's not complex actually at all. It gives you very good direction in terms of like she'll do rounded necklines or oval necklines. She won't do anything geometric or hard. Um, that's the basic kind of crux of it. We also provide information on color combining, how much contrast to wear, how much blended to wear, how many multiple colors to wear if you do that. Um, also again the psychology of the colors which are very important to know. Um, it's not just know what kind of shade of green you do or what kind of shade of purple you do or the type of yellow. What do they actually do for you? What do they communicate? So what we're doing here is expressing the nonverbal uh, language of color through actually talking about it. So this is a wonderful tool. It will work for her for life, whether she turns gray or she gets suntanned. And the, um, it's a wonderful tool for life. It'll save her so much time and money when she shops. And I would say for doing this, congratulations.